here's part two. Uh, I also decided to put down all the answers in the little square box here <clears throat> so that if you have tried this on your own and you came up with these answers, you don't need to watch the rest of the video. If, however, uh, you had some difficulties, you can continue to watch the rest of the development here. And the one thing I forgot on the previous part was to add the negative sign in front of the 1.2. I forgot to double check all of that. Okay, and so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and substitute into this equation right here. And so I1 is equal to I3 minus I2. I1 is also equal to this part of the equation. So I just set this equal to I3 minus I2. And now I have to solve for one or the other. And since I've got two I3s and only one I2, I think I'll just solve for I2 initially. And so I bring the I3 over to this side, and so I get a negative 1.2 volts minus an additional one uh, of the I3, so that's minus 3.5 times I3, and that's equal to negative I2. And then I just change the sign on all of the components of this equation in order to get the positive version of I2. And so I have plus 1.2 volts plus 3.5 I3 equals I2. Now that I have I2 and I3 in one equation and another equation with I2 and I3, and it looks like they're not identical equations. Sometimes we generate the same equation by going in circles, but I think we're okay here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this I2 and I'm going to put it into that equation and then solve for I3. So I go ahead and I take minus 18 volts and then minus 35 times my answer for I2 over here. So that'll be 1.2 volts plus 3.5 I3. And then I take and add my other minus 25 I3 and set that equal to zero. Okay. So then I go ahead and I finish solving all of these and I have now just one equation with I3 in it and that's the only variable. So when I multiply the rest of this out and solve for I3, then I end up getting the equation I3 is negative 0.407 amps. And so once I have that solution, then I go ahead and I take it and I plug it into this equation right here where I have I3 and I2. So by plugging this solution into my solution for, or my equation for I3, I'll then be able to generate my value for I2, which will give me 0 0.224 amps there. And then finally I take I3 and I2, and I use this equation right here, and use that to solve for I1. And then I have all three values, I1, I2, and I3. They're all negative, so that means that the current is going just the opposite of the direction I have indicated with my arrows here. So I3 is going up, I2 is going to the right, and I1 is going to the left. And so if I were to follow the direction of the currents, I would actually have to reverse this and say that the currents are going to flow in this direction rather than the direction I indicated. When I first set up my problem, it just took a wild guess. So the mathematics tells me I guessed wrong, and in reality, there, everything is going in the opposite direction. All right, hopefully that helps explain a little bit more about how to do Kirchhoff's laws rules for solving difficult equations or difficult circuits.